Hello and welcome to Peggy's Plants, coming to you from the Florida Keys. Plants grow outdoors. I know that's an obvious statement, but I think sometimes as plant collectors, we either ignore or forget that these plants that we bring into our home and call house plants can actually grow outdoors with little or no assistance from us in the right conditions. For example, this croton that I planted in my garden about two years ago, it gets watered twice a week from drip irrigation, but other than that, no assistance from me at all. And as you can see, this plant is thriving. It is almost as tall as I am, and I'm 5'4". Very seldom does an indoor-grown croton reach this size. And planted next to it is my Dracaena marginata. Yes, this is a Dracaena and it is probably about 15 to 20 feet tall. And this plant was started with one plant that had two stems and that was it. And if you look over here in my neighbor's yard next to this utility pole, you see that if you look carefully, that's a ficus elastica. Yeah, a rubber tree. It's as tall as the utility pole. How often do you see one like that in someone's home? <laughs> Unless they have really, really tall ce ceilings, I bet you've never seen that. And take a look at the size of the leaves on this pothos. This pothos is growing wild in the woods by my house. And you may have seen an earlier video where my husband pulled one of these for me. This is that plant. And these leaves are about 24 inches. And although I know it is possible for someone to grow pothos indoor with large leaves, I've never seen one with leaves as large as these. And the last so-called house plant that I'm going to show you that has grown full-time outdoors is this philodendron radiatum. And as you can see, it's absolutely huge. And I have more than one of these. Now I'm not showing you these to just say, look what I have. Do you notice a common thread? All of these plants that have been growing 100% outside with little care are massive. And that's why I like to take some of my house plants that I have been growing indoors and put them outdoors because they tend to grow better. They tend to grow faster. Yeah, I love to have my plants inside because it's a way of bringing nature in, but they thrive outdoors. They just get so much bigger. You might recognize the ficus. As you all may have seen in one of my videos, I don't do ficus. And this plant was at death's door and look at it now. I set it outside and it started growing leaves. So under my care, with all my help, it did nothing but lose leaves. So I took the triangularis that was bare naked. I thought it was dead. I put it out here also. I put it by a drip irrigation little micro head. And as you can see, it now has leaves. A lot of the times what I do with my plants that aren't doing well, I set them outside. Now I know everyone's um, weather isn't conducive to this, but it's something you may want to consider when your um, area gets warmer. Typically what I do at the end of winter is I come out and I clean up my garden. I cut back the, the trees. I do my pruning and clean up and all of that. And then I take a look at my house plants and decide if there are any that are struggling that I want to put outside or that I want to just put outside so that they can grow bigger, faster, hopefully. So I've gone inside and selected some plants that I want to transition to outside in the garden. Now they will not be permanently out there, but they will be out there at least until it gets too hot or if I see that they are struggling. Now this first one was, I'm very protective of this plant because I have an Epipremnum panatum variegata. And this was the first time, when I got this plant, it was the first plant I ever actually chopped up a new plant and um, got the nodes and propagated it. So this plant is from one of those propagations. 
So I'm a little protective of it. I will be keeping an eye on it. What I'm doing now is I am going to be putting it in this terracotta pot because I don't want the pot to be retaining any water. I'm also going to be adding perlite and things like that to the soil because I want it to be extremely well draining. We do get a rainy season here and it will also be by a, um, a irrigation head and be getting watered twice a week. It is warm out here and will continue to get warmer so the plant will dry out quickly but I don't want to take any chances when it rains or anything like that. So um, just want to make sure this plant has every chance of making it. As you can see the roots on this baby look fabulous. I'm happy about that because if you decide to put some plants outside like I said I do put plants out here when they're struggling just because the humidity is so high. I live in a tropical climate. I'm in the Florida Keys. We don't get extremely cold weather ever. So plants do well here outdoors. Um, this one I'm hoping will just take off and really grow. The humidity should be good for it. The weather should be good for it. I just have to make sure that it doesn't get too much sun and that it doesn't get too dry. So I'm just adding in more perlite because like I said, I don't want this soil to hold a lot of water and root my, rot my roots. <laughs> now when you transition your plants outside, um, one thing you really want to pay attention to is how much sun the plant's going to be getting. This plant was in my grow tent it was very humid in there and very bright. So even though it was very bright, I still will not put this in full sun because the sun is a lot harsher than, um, than the grow light and this plant would easily burn up in a day. But I do want it to get very bright light. So um, I will put it somewhere will it, where it will get indirect bright light and I also will put it near a water source so that I don't have to water it. When I put my plants out in the garden, I like to not have to do anything for them. I like them to be self-sufficient. I decided to go on and add a pole since I'm repotting, get it all out of the way at once. And hopefully this will encourage the plant to go on and start attaching and climbing. I normally put more common plants outside rather than the hard to find ones, but I do have several of these, so I'm going to give it a try. But you definitely want to keep an eye on them to see how they're adjusting because these plants, if things aren't right, if they don't like the conditions, they can go downhill pretty fast. So the next plant I plants I decided to also put outside is this uh, Philodendron Parisal Verde. Had it for a while. I have taken a cutting from it that is doing well and already rooted and I just really think that this plant will like it out here. I've actually had this on my patio for a while and it's really stretching out so I think it will really do well out in the yard and this is my variegated burl marks that my husband broke the top off of accidentally. This happens to be the top cutting, I mean, well the top broken part and it's already well rooted and I think it will do well out here also. This has been rooting in um, Lekka for I guess about three months now and as you can see it has absolutely beautiful roots. So again this was the top part that broke off. My husband dropped something on the plant and it just snapped but um, now I have two so no complaints here. But one thing I love about rooting plants in Lekka and dealing with Lekka you see how easy it is to get that out. Now, since this is transitioning from um, LECA to soil, I'm going to really have to keep an eye on this since it will be out in warm weather and it won't be as wet. So I'm going to definitely keep an eye on this plant since it will be adjusting to soil as well as to being grown outdoors. 
I am putting this one in a clay pot also. You don't have to put your plants in a clay pot if you're bringing them outside. Um, you can plant them in the soil. You can leave them in the pot they are in. It's up to you and it definitely is dependent on your setup. But like I said, I have um, irrigation here. They will be watered twice a week and we have rainy season. So I have to take all of that into consideration. And you need to take factors like that into consideration when you decide if you decide to move some of your plants outdoors as well. Now, if you decide that you're going to be planting some of your plants outside directly into the soil, this is what the burl marks looks like. It's all ready to go. And now we'll start on the Parizo Verde. But if you're planning on putting it directly into the soil, what I would recommend is that you first leave the plant in the pot and set it out there in the yard or on your patio or wherever you're going to have this plant. Set it out there in the pot and leave it for a few days and see how the plant reacts to the spot. You might find out that that area is getting more light than you expect um, or not enough light. So by leaving the plant in the pot initially, you'll get to try out a couple of different spots or however many times you need to move this pot until you find out where the plant is happiest and then plant it into the soil. That way you don't disturb the root, you're not stressing the plant out unnecessarily um, before you find out whether or not the plant's gonna actually work where you had in mind. I'm really excited about getting these plants out into the garden. I'm hoping that they will really take off and by doing this video, we'll be able to come back in a few months and compare the size. Have they really grown? Are they just struggling? Between the intensity of the sun and rainy season, it could really stress out these plants and they might not like it, but I'm hoping that's not going to be the case and we'll be able to look back in a few months and see some real growth. Now that all of the plants are potted up, let's get them out there in the garden. I lost daylight, a few days have passed, and the epipremnum is struggling a little bit on day three. I'm going to leave it here for now, but if it doesn't turn around, I'm going to have to move it. The variegated burl marks is in my front garden. It's kind of tucked under this bromeliad for a little protection from the sun. It's a pretty hardy plant, and it likes a little bit more light than the others so I think it'll be fine here but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn in the evening sun and the Parizo Verde is in my side garden and yeah this area gets some bright indirect light it will get direct sunlight early in the morning and that's about it and after three days it too is doing just fine well, that's about it for now. I'll be sure to keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Take care. Stay well. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.